Today I am super excited because this just came in. This is one of the Etcher cold pressed watercolor sketchbooks, journals, whatever they call them. And this has easily been in my like top five most wished for to test out art supplies for quite some time now. Because let me tell you, these things are not easy to get in Canada. But I finally found somewhere where I could get one, have it shipped to me, paid some interesting import fees for it, but it's here now and I cannot wait to try it out. So let's just bust into this and take a look at it. probably could have done without the extra plastic wrapper on the book itself. It's definitely, I think, the first sketchbook that I've ever gotten in a box. And there we have it. First off, I personally actually really like that it's white. I know, like, well, Let's put it this way. I think it's interesting and it is something that automatically sets it apart from like every other watercolor sketchbook or just a sketchbook in general, seeing as most of those are black. It has this nice textured like canvas on it. So the travelogue ones, where is my travelogue one? Here's a travelogue one for comparison, which is like that similar like canvas fabric weave um, type of situation, but you can see that is clearly way more gray than this. I'm sure the white doesn't throw a lot of people as it's obviously probably quite easy to get very dirty very fast. Realistically for me though, the sketchbook is probably not making it outside of my studio, let alone my house. So I'm not super worried about it getting like a filthy unless I have some sort of catastrophic paint spill, but that might actually look pretty cool on the front. So I guess something else I should have mentioned, I believe this is the largest size these books come in, but the cool thing is that they actually come in hot pressed and cold pressed, which I can't say I've really seen in a ton of watercolor sketchbooks. It's also 100% cotton watercolor paper, so if you're someone that's really concerned about that, then that's obviously a plus. It definitely feels really nice. I believe that the paper is actually 230 grams, where as like pretty typical watercolor paper tends to be more along the 300 mark so it's a little thinner but that might not be an issue since it is 100% cotton. But yeah overall it feels really nice. The tooth that I can visibly see on it looks really interesting. So yeah I guess I'm gonna go ahead sketch something out so that we can actually put this thing to the test. We're gonna start this portion of the video off with somewhat of a massive disclaimer because this was easily the worst portrait I have drawn in weeks, if not months. For some reason, I decided it was just a grand idea to go ahead and try and draw this when I was like half asleep at the end of a long day and could barely keep my eyes open. And it went about as well as you would probably assume it would. No, but I guess if anything, this has turned into a great example of proof to say that, you know, despite what social media may lead you to believe, artists do in fact have to erase and erase sometimes quite frequently and fix stuff and change proportions and things. But yeah, this one was just really a rough one for me and I just obviously decided to power through it for some reason and not just go to bed like I probably should have. But even after like, I guess, finishing for the night, I did still fix stuff in the morning when I could actually see straight and see just how wonky a lot of my facial features were in this. The situation did sort of spark a great opportunity to test just how much damage this paper could take because I definitely damaged this paper quite a lot on my own just from drawing and erasing and drawing over that section and erasing it again and apparently just really carving my pencil into this paper. So if anything, this drawing has turned into a great strength test for this paper. And of course I'm doing a portrait for this test, not only because it's my favorite subject matter to draw, but I also just generally think they make a great test subject, at least for me, because I tend to really beat the paper. <laughs> I mean, I know I've already really beaten the paper up with my drawing, but for the skin tones and stuff, I tend to really almost scrub at it to blend out harsher lines. I like to try and get a really smooth transition in the skin and the shadows and stuff. 
stuff. And so I do tend to put my paper through the ringer a bit. It's also something that I tend to do quite a lot of layers on, so that is something that will just naturally test the paper's strength on top of me scrubbing at it somewhat continuously. And it's also a subject matter that I feel like the tooth and texture of the paper becomes a little more important. I personally do not really like the look of super textured paper for portraits. It can just seemingly make the person look like they have alligator skin or something, which I guess in this case might have been kind of an amusing uh, thing to have happen. But for me, I just prefer something that has some tooth and texture, but not so much or not something that is so repetitive or refined that you really, that is like the first thing you notice in the portrait. So now that we've sort of gone over what I personally look for in watercolor paper, I guess let's get on to what I actually think of this and what I was thinking of and my user experience with this sketchbook. Let's start with the durability because that was sort of the first concern that I brought up in this video. And despite me feeling like I damaged the paper quite a lot in my sketching process, I really did not notice any visible damage really in this paper when I was painting on it. The only place that I feel like maybe a little bit of damage happened or at least started to affect the paint sitting on the paper was around the left corner of the mouth. I'm not not sure why that area in particular. I must have erased that corner of the mouth much more frequently or something and the paint there just felt like it started to bleed out a little more than it probably should have. If you've never damaged watercolor paper before, it's kind of difficult to explain, but depending on the type of paper, it tends to just be like you put paint down and it just starts to like spread and bleed through the pulp where you didn't put paint down more than normal. You probably will be able to tell if you've done any damage to the surface of the paper, if it ever happens to you, which it probably will. It's not always the end of the world with watercolor. It tends to be a little more probable problematic because you are kind of relying on the surface to keep the paint in the areas that you want it. If you were using something like gouache or acrylic or something, you would be able to just sort of cover up and skim over that area, but it does become more of a prevalent issue with watercolor, and I did not notice any damage any of the areas where I thought it might have started to be an issue, at least not to any great extent. The second part of durability for me is its lifting capabilities, how easy it is to lift paint off of the paper if you want to, and what that paper is like after you do that. And this paper lifted color beautifully. I was, of course, blending out the skin tones when I was putting like a pretty intense blotches of color and I wanted to blend out the edges. That is more of like a scrubbing and blending sort of thing, but you are somewhat lifting color out of that area, especially if you notice if it's gotten too dark or something. Around the eyes, I lifted a decent amount of color like under the eyes, sort of in the eye bags to bring out more of that highlighted area where I just felt that the color bled into areas that it should have been lighter and the color lifted out beautifully there and gave it this really nice natural look. It didn't like over whiten. Sometimes that that's a big issue if the color lifts out of the paper too much. You can start just having blotches of white that you don't want. I will say I also did quite a lot of layers in the skin on the face just to try and build up those different tones in the skin and try and make it re look really lifelike and have that luminosity and get all of those tones right and all of that was great. I didn't notice any damage or issues there whatsoever and I feel like I used used a decent amount of water on this piece, especially with the hair in the background and just trying to keep it looser. I did definitely sort of beat this paper with a lot of water, maybe more than a lot of people might dare try in a sketchbook, especially considering I only was holding the edges down with a couple of clips. So there wasn't a whole lot of like 
tensioning on the edges to minimize any warping there. But realistically, since this is a sketchbook, you probably are looking at just using clips as opposed to taping down all of the edges. And lastly, the tooth of the paper, I actually was quite a big fan of. For me, it was the perfect smoothness while still having a bit of texture. So the color separated really nicely on it and I still feel like it retained its vibrancy on the paper, but it wasn't so textured that you know, there was crazy alligator skin going on or anything. It really just was the perfect amount for me. I did keep this piece completely watercolor and just did a bit of refining for highlights in the eye area with some white gouache. Here's the piece all dried and finished. I'm gonna remove the clips and show you just how much the paper warped. There's definitely a warping that happened, but that's just kind of to be expected with watercolor paper. And I did use a ton of water just to blend things out. And on the background and stuff, I was not worried about conserving my water usage. So considering this was only held down by a couple of clips, I would say that this warping is actually pretty minimal. Despite its rocky start, I actually really ended up liking the process of making this piece and this sketchbook. For me, it was a perfect combination of all of the things that I look for in a watercolor paper. Not too much texture, great strength, and great building and lifting capabilities. This will probably be the sketchbook that I grab first when I go to work on another piece. I'm looking forward to playing around with it with some of the other mediums that I frequently use with watercolor to see how it works. Have you tried the Etcher sketchbooks? And if so, what did you think of them? Also, I always love hearing your watercolor sketchbook recommendations, so if you have one that you really love, let me know what it is in the comments. But that is everything, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.